The Western Roman Empire's decline is a story steeped in grandeur, transformation, and loss. Once a beacon of civilization, culture, and power, the Western Empire represented a world that spanned from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean, controlling vast territories, influencing diverse peoples, and commanding the respect of its neighbors and foes alike. The decline of this empire was not the result of a singular catastrophic event, but rather a gradual, multifaceted process taking centuries to unravel. The factors that contributed to this decline were complex, ranging from internal struggles to external pressures, social upheavals to economic crises, each one eating away at the foundation of what had once been the greatest empire in the ancient world. At the height of its power, the Roman Empire was a marvel of engineering, military might, and governance. Its roads connected cities and far-flung provinces, its legions stood guard over borders that spanned continents, and its legal system became the foundation for modern law. The empire flourished, expanding its reach and influence across Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. But within the grandeur of the Western Empire's success, the seeds of its eventual decline had already been planted. Political instability, which first showed signs in the 3rd century AD, would prove to be a constant thorn in the Empire's side. A series of weak or corrupt emperors whose short-lived reigns were often marked by assassinations, civil wars, and usurpations meant that central authority was in constant flux. Without stable leadership, the empire could not focus on the challenges it faced, both within and outside its borders. One of the significant internal factors contributing to the decline was the growing economic instability. The Roman economy, once fueled by conquest and the spoils of war, began to stagnate. The empire's vast territories, while initially sources of wealth, became increasingly difficult to manage. As the empire stopped expanding, the flow of wealth from new conquests diminished, leading to a heavier reliance on taxation. This burden fell disproportionately on the lower classes, while the elites found ways to avoid paying their fair share. Inflation became rampant, and the devaluation of currency caused further economic strife. The division of the empire into eastern and western halves in 285 AD under Emperor Diocletian, although meant to make governance more efficient, exacerbated economic difficulties for the western half. The Eastern Roman Empire, with its wealthy cities like Constantinople, retained much of the empire's financial resources, while the western empire, more rural and less economically vibrant, struggled to sustain itself. This economic fragility was mirrored by the weakening of the Western Empire's military power. The once dominant Roman legions, which had been the backbone of the Empire's strength, gradually lost their effectiveness. The army, which had traditionally been composed of Roman citizens, increasingly relied on mercenaries and foreign soldiers, many of whom were not as loyal to Rome's cause. These barbarian soldiers, recruited from outside the Empire, often had divided loyalties and would later play pivotal roles in the empire's downfall. The vast borders of the Western Empire were difficult to defend, and without the military might to protect them, incursions from hostile groups became more frequent and more devastating. The influx of barbarian tribes into Roman territories was one of the most significant external pressures contributing to the fall of the Western Roman Empire. The term barbarian, from the Roman perspective, referred to various non-Roman peoples, including the Visigoths, Vandals, Huns, and Ostrogoths. These groups, often pressured by other migratory tribes or environmental changes, sought refuge or opportunity within Roman lands. The Romans had long dealt with barbarian groups, sometimes through diplomacy, alliances, or even by settling them in Roman territories as foederati, a sort of client-state relationship. However, as the power of the empire weakened, these arrangements grew more precarious. By the 4th century, 
Barbarian tribes were no longer content to coexist peacefully with the Empire, but sought to carve out their own kingdoms within its borders. The Goths, a group of Germanic tribes, played a particularly dramatic role in the decline of the Western Empire. In 378 AD, at the Battle of Adrianople, the Eastern Roman Emperor Valens suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of the Visigoths. Although this battle took place in the eastern part of the empire, it sent shockwaves through the entire Roman world, revealing that the Roman military was no longer invincible. The Visigoths, led by Alaric, would later march on Rome itself, culminating in the sack of the city in 410 AD. But the Visigoths were not the only barbarian group to chip away at the Western Empire. The Vandals, under their king Geiseric, crossed into North Africa, seizing the wealthy provinces there and establishing a kingdom of their own. North Africa had been one of the breadbaskets of the Roman Empire, and its loss was a significant blow to the Western Empire's economy and food supply. In 455 AD, the Vandals would go on to sack Rome, further demonstrating the empire's vulnerability. Meanwhile, the Huns, a nomadic people from the steppes of Central Asia, began raiding Roman territories in the mid-5th century under the leadership of their fearsome king, Attila. While the Huns did not establish permanent settlements within the empire, their incursions added to the chaos and instability that was already overwhelming the Western Roman state. Amidst these external threats, the internal decay of Roman society continued. The social structure of the empire, once rigidly hierarchical but functional, began to break down. The Roman elite, who had traditionally played a role in local governance and the military, became increasingly detached from public life, retreating to their villas and estates. Many of them saw little incentive to participate in the defense of the empire or to contribute to its governance, preferring to protect their own wealth and status. This withdrawal of the elites further weakened the ability of the empire to respond to its many crises. Another critical factor in the empire's decline was the rise of Christianity. While Christianity itself was not a cause of the empire's fall, its spread had profound effects on Roman society and governance. Emperor Constantine had legalized Christianity in the early 4th century, and by the end of the century, it had become the dominant religion in the empire. The traditional Roman pantheon, with its gods and rituals that had long been tied to the state and its authority, was replaced by a monotheistic religion that emphasized a spiritual kingdom over earthly power. The Christian church grew in influence, often challenging the authority of the emperor and further complicating governance. While the church provided a sense of unity and order in a time of chaos, it also shifted the focus away from the traditional civic and military duties that had sustained the empire for centuries. By the 5th century, the Western Roman Empire was little more than a shell of its former self. The emperors, who still ruled from cities like Ravenna and Milan, wielded little real power, often serving as puppets for powerful military leaders or barbarian warlords. One such figure was Flavius Aetius, a Roman general who had fought against Attila and the Huns. Aetius was one of the last great Roman military leaders, but even his efforts could not halt the tide of decline. In 476 AD, the last Roman emperor of the West, Romulus Augustulus, was deposed by Odoacer, a Germanic chieftain. With this event, the Western Roman Empire came to an end, though the Eastern Roman Empire, later known as the Byzantine Empire, would continue for another thousand years. The fall of the Western Roman Empire did not happen overnight, nor did it occur as the result of a single cause. Instead, it was the culmination of centuries of gradual decline, weakened by internal decay and external pressures. The empire's vast size, which had once been a source of strength, became its undoing as it struggled to manage its far-flung territories. Political instability, economic hardship, and the erosion of social structures further sapped the strength of the empire. 
Meanwhile, the relentless pressure from barbarian groups at its borders, combined with the changing dynamics of the Roman military, made it increasingly difficult to defend against invasion. In the end, the Western Roman Empire's fall was as much a transformation as it was a collapse. The barbarian kingdoms that emerged in the wake of Rome's decline did not simply destroy the Roman world, they absorbed many aspects of Roman culture, law, and governance. In many ways, the legacy of the Western Roman Empire lived on in the societies that succeeded it. The Christian Church, which had risen to prominence within the Empire, became a unifying force in the post-Roman world, preserving and transmitting many elements of Roman culture and learning. The Roman legal system, too, left an indelible mark on the civilizations that followed, influencing the development of European law for centuries to come. The story of the Western Roman Empire's decline is not one of simple destruction, but of transformation. What was once the dominant power in the ancient world gave way to a new order, one that would shape the course of European history for millennia. Rome's fall marked the end of one era, but it also paved the way for the birth of new societies, new cultures, and new powers. From the ruins of the Western Roman Empire, a new world was born.